Hello, my friends. This is Lakeside Performance. I now have a lot of engine parts to start putting our engine back together. So I've got a rear main seal, all new spark plugs. Uh, this is, I don't remember, thermostat housing. So brand new thermostat housing, with th brand new thermostat, beautiful. I have um, valve cover gaskets, intake manifold gaskets, EGR gasket, thermostat, I mean transmission uh, service kit. Uh, this is belts and pulleys kit, and this is the thermostat kit right here. So, bunch of new parts to start working on that guy. And uh, but right now, before we get into that, I want to try to get the brake pedal installed, so that way I can start getting the distribution box installed. I think that master cylinder assembly needs to go in first. So I need to work on that and get that guy cleaned up. So let's get that guy cleaned up and then just try to get that puppy in here. And uh, then let's go from there and see what happens. So that's what's gonna happen next. But this thing is, uh, this master cylinder needs, needs a little cleanup action here. Let's see which one, which bag is it in? Which bag? It's in this bag. Already got it out of storage. We just need to get it cleaned up here. And get it out and cleaned up. So let's take a look at it right now. And then uh, and then I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. Alright guys, we're back. And I've gotten all the brake components, brakes, master cylinder components cleaned up the best I can. The brake uh, booster here looks fantastic. Everything looks like it should from the, the factory. The only problem is, is there's like this little vapor barrier plastic piece that goes right here and they don't really sell that anywhere. So I'm not sure what to do there yet. I got to figure that out. Um, so I may have to make some sort of seal for that end. On this end, uh, there's a this seal right here, seals the, the uh, master cylinder to the booster right here, and this seal actually looks really good. So no need to do anything there. This was inside the uh, master cylinder there. I'm not exactly sure what that does, but whatever. Then here's the heat shield. It turned out really good. I actually soaked this in an acid, a light acid right there to get it back clean again. And I think I'm gonna spray this with some uh, clear coat just so that it stays nice and silver and doesn't rust or anything since I put it in that acid mixture. The only problem is this guy right here, the brake uh, master cylinder reservoir. Um, if you look towards the light there, you can see there is some really, really, really nasty stuff in there. I don't know what that is in there. I've been soaking this thing for a couple hours and I just, I can't get that. There's no access to the inside of this obviously. So I can't get that out of there. It's just stuck in there and I don't want it getting into the brake line. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna order a new one of these reservoirs and just be done with it, which will probably come with a new strainer. The strainer goes in here Strainer goes like right there, like so, which came clean. It had a bunch of stuff in it. And then this guy right here had a ton of stuff on it uh, as well. But, um, and it just goes in here like that. And so this is the, the cap and the little flow with the contacts to tell you when you're running low of brake fluid. So that's how that goes. That's what it looks like. But see, yeah, it's kind of yellowed. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it, I, I feel like it should probably look like that uh, cup right there, but you can see how yellow it's gotten over the years. And I don't 
I think the new ones are probably more white, white clear color like that. And so yeah, it'll be good to get a new one of these just so we have a fresh start. I've already cleaned this master cylinder out. It's it's a 110%. The seals look really good. Um, it works properly. At least it was pumping uh, parts cleaner fluid through it perfectly fine with no leaks. Uh, two brake pressure sensors. Um, so everything looks good. I'm happy with how it turned out. I've got the seals all cleaned up. These look excellent. This is the little vacuum hose uh, seal right here. And then uh, here's the two little bolts that was holding the uh, master cylinder to the booster. And obviously if I throw this in that acid right there, it's gonna eat this uh, uh, coating off of it and then they'll wind up rusting. So I went through my hardware stash and found me some locking nuts right here and they look really good. So they look awesome. So I'm gonna use these to put that on there and that'll be good to go. But I gotta order one of those. So yeah, let's get this thing. I, I believe I can get away without installing that right now. So, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this put on there and then get this installed and all these components and get them put in here. That way we can get the the uh, wire and distribution box installed permanently. So let's get that done. Wow, I got so freaking lucky because I wasn't sure what I was gonna do for a seal for this side that goes on the firewall. And then I was just at the uh, my local Lowe's plumbing department because I was looking for a new stem for my faucet, for my daughter's faucet that was, it was leaking. So. I had to buy a new stem for it and replace it. Well, while I was there, I was just, just kind of scanning around and lo and behold, I found these. This is a uh, gasket rubber for plumbing. And I think this is gonna work perfectly. And uh, it comes with as a six by six, it's 16th of an inch thick. It's just, it's just EPDM rubber. And you know that will serve as a vapor barrier plus also it will serve as a gasket for this thing to isolate the the noise from the the firewall which i think that's what that little plastic vinyl piece does i'm not exactly sure but there we go got it and i found two more nuts just like the other side and i went ahead and mounted the uh the master cylinder on here as well and uh it looks Looks really good, it's looking brand new. Uh, I did spray this with a matte clear so that it would not rust. And also when I torqued these bolts, I uh, used a little paint marker here to mark these bolts. That's what I'm gonna start doing. I'm gonna start marking these bolts so that number one, I know they're torqued, but number two, I know that I'm done with it. I don't have to touch that part again. So. That's what I'm gonna start doing all these bolts that I put back on this puppy. Uh, get this thing reattached to the firewall. Should be pretty straightforward. Well, boys and girls, I think I am close enough on the electrical portion of the of this Mercedes build that 
I may be able to put the battery in and see what happens. <laughs> My daughter's words just now to me were, don't catch the house on fire. <laughs> so let's see what we could do. Uh, I've got all of the wires. This is the, the wires that go through the to the headliner. Um, they're not, obviously I don't have the headliner completed yet. It's up there. So I got a little bit more to do on that. But everything is connected except for that's not connected. That's the engine harness. So it's not it's not in the fuse box right there yet. But everything else is good. I've got the uh, the dash in. Console is in. Uh, I've got one of the seat bases over there plugged in to try and I can't find a freaking seat switch right now for some reason. This particular ML320 is a base so it doesn't have it did not have the power seats from the factory. But I'm pretty sure it's just a uh, plug and play thing. So we'll see. But the seat bases came out of a 2002 ML320. I have yet to be able to find any good seats, but I did pick up some seats and they're better than mine, but still not great. But I've still got to get the, uh, the headliner in here, obviously, but a lot of things are done. The accessory wiring is going to be, is right here, but I'm, I've got to figure out where I'm going to mount that circuit breaker and all that stuff. But everything's looking really good. Um, and I can't get the freaking steering wheel off. I've got a, I guess I just need to soak it down with some WD-40 or something, the, the little bolt, and then see if I can somehow or another get the steering wheel off so that way I can get the clock spring wiring plugged in. I can't plug that in. It will not let me plug that in. So speakers are installed, airbags, you know, all nine. I've started building my floorboards down here. Anyways, let's get the battery and put it in real quick and then let's go from there. Peace. You gotta hold your brick to get this one in. Let's hit the power window buttons. If you remember, that one didn't work before. Okay. Let's try this one. This one didn't work before either. It works perfectly now. That one works now. Which I think that one worked before. That one works really well. Let's try the power mirrors over there. Oh yeah, look at there, it works. Let's try this one. Oh yeah, look at there. None of this stuff worked. I'm, I'm so amazed because none of that kind of stuff worked previously. Yeah, I got air. I don't think one worked before. I don't remember. It's high. Oh, what about the sunroof? Let's see if it works, because I that's specifically why I even put the harness in here for that. Shields up. Oh look at there! Ow. Would you look at that? Nice. Alright, I just installed the factory. The original headlights for this thing, I know they kind of look crusty musty right now and definitely are. Oh, look at that. Maybe a little bit better wide angle there. That's pretty cool.
Well, this thing has turned out freaking amazing. Uh, got this thing all painted up. I got all the flanges all polished up. She is ready for assembly. Got to get the valve cover back off so I can get the oil fill cap back on. So yeah, I'm making progress. Here's the intake manifold right here. At least the top and bottom half. The other sections are over here right now. So here's the guts of uh, guts of the intake manifold. So there's those two pieces. Here's the part with the swirl mix, whatever you call them. I don't know what they call them, but got this all cleaned up. It was a true mess. And here's a, another section. I think that goes in the top. Anywho's, let's uh, lay all these parts out right here and see if we can start getting that intake manifold right there back together. That would be super duper awesome. So let's get it. Here's all the parts for the intake manifold. So now we're gonna start getting this puppy together. Well, now that we got the engine basically completed, I still got the, to put the uh, hooks, so that way I can put this thing back on the engine hoist over there, so I can replace the rear main seal, but that's pretty much the last thing that needs to be done uh, before putting the manifolds on it and dropping it back in the, the M-Class. Gave her a little wash last night, so I'm running the uh, dehumidifier right now. It says it's 30% humidity, so it's probably about dry. My front sunroof drains are too short, so they're not connected right now. So I was having some issues with that. But today, today, let's drag out the old transmission here and maybe the transfer case if I have time, but I'm gonna drag this thing out and uh, uh, get it pressure washed, cleaned up, looking new and fresh and uh, get that pan off and start digging into that and uh, see, where, see where it is lacking and get it put back together and hopefully reattached to the motor.